jobs that it would provide would be uh, relatively high paying jobs, uh, basically from somewhere around $500 a week up to $2,000 a week, depending on what position they were working within the crew. Uh, it's uh, it's a, basically about a 50-50 cash and in-kind uh, opportunity. And uh, the folks from Alexis are here to, to visit with us. And I think Ms. Faith Ford is going to be the spokesman for the group. If you would step up to the microphone and tell us a little bit about what y'all are, what you're going to do, and how you wish to accomplish it. Hi. Good afternoon. Um, well, this is something that we've sort of, that's evolved over the course of conversations with various locals, including Chad Bailey, um, Campion Murphy, who I brought in. We live here now. We have a residence here. We've relocated here from Los Angeles. So it's what you would call a workforce development program. Um, and if you ask what that is, to me, we, my husband and myself, we both learned on the job. That's how I learned to do what I do. And uh, I've been working in this business for, I guess, I'll age myself, 30 years now. And- um, You started when you were two, huh? <laughs> I, Yeah, that's right, I started when I was two. I moved to New York when I was 17. And uh, I've been do doing nothing but observing behind the scenes since I've been there. And some of my best friends are crew people and continue to be so in this industry. Crew is very important. It's an integral part of our business. The people you see in front of the camera are 10% of a production. I know this, I've known this, since when film was starting in Louisiana, because we went down and met with the film commissioner, my husband and myself did. And one of the first questions we asked him was, where are you getting your crews from? He, was, he said, well, we're gonna be bringing people in from Texas and we're gonna be, you know. And I've always felt that with electricians that we have here, carpenters that we have here, people that are, you know, in the theater program, the arts, now technology is a huge part of our business. Go see Lincoln, go see any big production, and look at the techno crew that's involved, the post-production crew in and of itself, which happens after the production, after the cameras are off, is huge. And um, one of the reasons I wanted to, to do this is because I can continue my business elsewhere and still live here, and I will continue to do so, but I feel like we can build a strong infrastructure here so we don't have to farm out jobs. And when I say that, I'm saying, you know the reality shows that are here in town, done some investigative work about that. Know a few people that are working, but it's not the entire crew. They're bringing them in. They're bringing them in from New York. Why? Well, the networks have money on this. They can't afford to take the chance. Well, I'm here telling you, for free, I'm offering my services for free, and all that we have to come up with is the cost of the production, which means we're trying to bring in possibly 10 people that would serve as crew members, key crew, crew members in each sort of um, uh, branch of our production. So that would be, um, we don't even need someone for hair department because we're gonna use someone that worked on escapees. We're gonna use the people that worked on the movie that I did here for to head up some departments. Wouldn't have ever gotten to do that. And we're going to bring in a few people and they're gonna serve as instructors on the job. Because let me just tell you, you can walk away from a film school with a degree right now and you will still be starting out getting someone's coffee. And that's just the bare facts. Because you have to work your way up. I'm giving someone a chance to work while they're learning. And the way to do it is to start small with something like this. And it's, it's actually the only way from me seeing that we're gonna be able to get this to where we can close this gap and not have to import all the crew. And my ultimate goal is to bring in a series. That is my goal. I almost brought one in here this year and I was very close. And I can't even tell you what that means. Um, I have good relationships with a lot of networks but they ultimately ask me the same question. They say, how are your crews? Well, I can't really answer that question unless I've investigated fully. It is inclusive, it's diverse. I, I actually have never worked on a production that didn't have a strong African-American group involved because let's just face it, we're all, we're all very talented, we all have something to give. In my business, 
we are diverse. That's the way I see it. So um, we have different, you know, we don't notice religion, we don't notice anything, we just notice art. We all come together for the same reason, is to create great product that we can be proud of. And ultimately, this is a short film that we're going to do. So we're actually gonna produce something that can go out there in the marketplace and be used as a product that we can be proud of and we could possibly be up for awards. Now it's not for profit, okay? But we can be recognized and we continue to be recognized. So it's already in the state. It's just about closing that little gap between Shreveport and Baton Rouge. It's being a part of, not apart from. Any questions? Uh, let me ask one thing. If you're successful in doing this, um, this is one production you're talking about right now? We're gonna, there's gonna be others, but this is the first of others that we would want to do. But this is, look, toe in the water time. We're gonna be the first ones to say, if people aren't coming and they're not doing, we're not, we're, we're not gonna, we're not looking to see how much money we can spend. We're looking at how much money, money we can not spend and we can save. Because when I'm a, a producer in a production, I'm always looking for that. I wanna create jobs, but I don't wanna have an excess amount of money. I want it to all go toward the art. So if someone's getting paid for a job, they've gotta bring something to the table. And that's the way it goes. So. If, if you're successful and training this, uh, this basic group of folks that you're 10, 20 people, mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, how, will, how will this group be able to uh, function for uh, future interests that wouldn't necessarily be y'all's interests? Oh, well, for example, when that, you know, I'm gonna use this because I know they come into town, I'm gonna say, when Cajun Pawn Stars comes into town, say, these people would know what, so they, they wouldn't know until I say to them, what are you qualified to do? And then they can say, I'm eligible to work in the, you know, uh, elect as an electrician, let's say, um, set building. And uh, for that show, they may not need it, but they would need an art department of some sort and whatever that is. So they would find out what they're qualified for and they would have experience. It's, it's, it's interesting that they would have something on their resume to start out. That's very important. I had to go to New York with no resume. I had no resume, but what I did was I said, I had done this play, that play, that play off Broadway. Now it wasn't lying. It was off Broadway. <laughs> it wasn't on Broadway. Well, I actually traveled around the state competing in, in productions. But what I had to do is once I got in that room, I had to, you know, so I'm not gonna, the, 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 here's the thing. This is an opportunity for them to work on other productions as well. You know, they're not only exclusively tied to work on our productions. They can travel to Shreveport. They can, but our point is to get local people who live here so that, in the future, you, the gap is when you can't pull crew, just, I'm gonna tell you guys what pulling crew means. What we found out when we were doing escapee, we got down to the wire and we found out we didn't have enough crew here. You see what I'm saying? And we did a union production. Now, by law, in the union, they're supposed to live within an hour of where you're shooting. They don't allow you. Now, a non-union -produ production doesn't do that. You know, so you will have productions that won't do that. But I work union, and because the benefits are good. They are also, because Campion's union and my, I am union, there will be future eligibility for belonging to the union, which has amazing benefits, you know. Our health care program is yeah, pretty amazing. You have to join. If you would, step, step up. up. Sure. Step up. Would you say your name? Uh, yes, thank you for your time. Uh, my name's Campion Murphy. I'm the other half, and uh, <laughs> I mostly write and direct and produce, and I also have been in the business for 31 years, actually, a year older than her, um, since I was 19. Um, I started working at Paramount Pictures and in, in, in production um, in Los Angeles. And, um, but non-union people can actually work on union productions. Um, uh, they don't have to join the unions, so that's the good thing. They can have that option later on. Um, there's benefits, obviously, and then sometimes there's not. Um, what this is, is we wanted to, um, our goal a couple years ago, we were talking about stages and things, what can we do here to, to help the industry and business, and I t turned to Faith, I said, we have to do a full film here to show that it can be done. So we did that with Escapee. What Faith was talking about is um, we had to um, s spend a good portion of our budget 
importing crew from Baton Rouge that was experienced um, to uh, which we had to cut our days of shooting. So I shot that movie in 12 days, which is in extremely fast. I mean, it was just, it's almost impossible. Um, which was originally scheduled for 18 days. Now, if there was a crew here, I wouldn't have had that problem, that money, because they would just go home at night and they'd get a paycheck and they wouldn't have to get per diem or be set up at hotels and, and gas money and all that stuff. What we've done is um, I've written two short projects to protect myself because I'm working for, with inexperienced people, both nonprofit. Well, the first one's nonprofit for sure. The second one is a short. You really can't sell a short, but you can market it for the area. So you could say, look, we shot this in Alexandria. Maybe it'll go on and get awards or whatever. We're giving our time for free. Um, we both get paid pretty well for what we do when we're doing it. Um, we lo I like the area. Of course, Faith likes it. She's from here, and I've been here for 15 years, mostly off and on, but we're here most of the time now, pretty much permanently now. Um, I think it's, a, it's a, a gem. I think it's like a hidden secret, in my opinion, as a filmmaker. I think the locations are phenomenal. It looks like anywhere USA. Um, I've written multiple things. I have producers and people that come up to me and ask me, can we shoot your movie, da 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 for this amount of money? How are the crews? And I have to answer these people honestly. I can't tell a friend of mine or an associate of mine or something, oh, wow, the crews are just great in Alexandra. Come shoot a movie here. I'll, I'll, I'll lose all credibility. Um, so what we wanted to do was kind of take the, the, the uh, an example of like the theater. Take how they build it. Those plays are phenomenal. I was very impressed. The ones we saw Annie and the other one, and I was really impressed. And how they've put these plays together, we want to do it locally here with a film crew. So we don't have to import people from Baton Rouge, no offense from New Orleans and all these other places. Um, so, and it won't happen overnight. We're going to start with one. And they're going to have, you learn, it, I mean, Chad's just started with us. He's already learned a ton, I'm sure. He can speak for himself. You learn so much on these projects. We can roll into a possible second one if it works out well. Um, by the second one, there'll be so much more experiences. As Faith said, they'll have two credits on their resume. They can call me. The producer they're going to try to get a job can say, how was this person on the set? If they were, you know, I have credits. They, I could say they were good. You know, they, they worked hard. You should hire them. You know, and they probably will. So, um, we care. That's all I can say. We care about the area. I, I, um, I love making, I love creating, I love making projects. Like I said, it's the reason for the short film, it can be done in a small amount of time with not a lot of money, but we'll make it look like a film. People got so excited when we were doing Escape E, and we've had countless people coming up to us and saying, when are you going to do this again? You know, and people really get really excited here. Um, and uh, it was a lot of fun. So anyway, um, our purpose is to eventually get people, like I'm better than I was when I did my first one or when I wrote my first script, I'm better than, you know, when I've written my se seventh or eighth. So the work experience makes you better to be able to carry on and do, uh, get hired for other jobs. And then I can turn to my colleagues out there that say, how are the crews in Alexandria and Pineville? And, and, and a year from now, maybe I could say, or less, I could say they're really good. These 10 people, you can trust these 10 people and blend them with, in with a couple of people. And what we're doing right now is we're going to take a skeleton crew of the folks we worked with in Baton Rouge, and we're going to bring them up, and we're going to pay them. That's what the cost is for, to help us um, over a spread out period of time, because I work very fast, so this is going to be like molasses for me. But I did it on purpose so the people can observe, and we're going to open it up to the public, because we said, and we're going to we're going to have some things for the archives. We're going to make stills. We're going to make a documentary <coughs> B-roll, the making of, so the city can have that, and um, we're going to let people have hands-on experience and learn. So by the time we roll around to the second one those people are going to be better. And then the next one, maybe we could, down the line, when we're ready to do another film again, I, my goal is, and I'll finish up with this, we had 80% probably in Baton Rouge last time, 20 here. I'd like to flip it around eventually, you know, and only bring in maybe 10% from other places and have the majority of people being paid to work on films here.
Okay. Uh, anybody else? Thank you. Committee members have questions? Yes. Uh, you say you'll bring 10 people in? Basically, mm -hmm. 10, 10 to 12. I asked How many for? people will you ask to be trained? I would say t we talked about that. I, I would say about I could for a short film, 20 to 25. We could fill in those. Any more is gonna, is a bit ridiculous. Although I mentioned to someone, I, I don't know if it was the mayor or not, we would open the sets, and what happened was when we were doing escape B, people would come and watch and observe. So say they weren't part of the project or they were out of town when we put this thing together, they can still come and watch as long as we're ready to roll, you know, everybody is quiet and so forth, and they can observe and maybe get in on the next one. Like a pyramid effect. Yeah, so we, we would like to say one third of who we're bringing up, I'm trying to kind of make it like a third this time, <coughs> two thirds we can fill in with people here, locals. Mr. Johnson, you have a question? Uh, yes. Uh, when do you plan to start and how do you plan to, uh, I guess, avatar the market, what you're doing? Uh, well, we'll start, my, the dates of starting, we're kind of starting a little bit in our, ourselves just because it, it's such a process, but we would start our prep, which means, you know, you start looking up locations, <laughs> and, um, which I already done in my head because I do that when I'm walking around downtown. That's the way my brain works. But uh, December 11th, we would wrap on the 23rd. Um, and then I would post, which means edit and get the film to finish after Christmas. And, and they talked about having a date. I put to the end of January. It might be sooner because it's a short film. I mean, just to give you an example, in one day of Escape E, I shot more scenes in one day than this entire short. So we're going to spread this over four days. So like I said, um, I forget the second part of your question. I guess for the... Uh, marketing to get the 10 people involved. How do you plan to make that approach to recruit? Do you want to yes. discuss that? Because Chad's already been getting on that. So. Oh, okay. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Chad Bailey, and I am a co-producer for this project with Alexis Crew Production. As far as the time frame, um, we've been t we've been kind of having a great deal of dialogue about this production, uh, this short, if you will, uh, probably for the past two to three months, in terms of actual. And that's on our end in terms of you know producing something like this. But in terms of actual um, soliciting those from the local community to participate, I mean readily. We're, we're you know that that time comes up now. As far as um, advertisement, we do have a website. Uh, it is up alexiscrewproductions.com. But in term as far as positions available, they'll then be listed based on. Um, the departments that are, you know, positions that are available. For example, as, as Campion said, that we will bring in some folks from who've worked on the past production who are over different departments. It's kind of like a mentorship, um, workforce development training program. They'll then be able to work alongside of them throughout the process from pre to middle production all the way through post production. Right, and my question was sent around for those that's watching, those that's going to read it in the media, you know, because there's going to be individuals out there that want to contact, you know, uh, you and uh, your company see how can they get involved with the process, how can they get be involved with the training program, and you know, what steps would they need to make? I think, yeah, how, we're, how are we going to get it out to the public? We've been holding back because we don't want to, sorry, we <laughs> don't want to, hear you. we didn't want to uh, false, give a false start in case uh, this doesn't happen because, you know, like I said, we might, it could be done different ways, but um, because I know once we open the floodgates, people want to do this. I mean, there's a good uh, group out there for this. Um, folks have contacted you all before from previous ones. Right. So we have some of those folks. We've talked to the people at the plays that we've gone to, local, at the, with the theater groups. The, the coffee house is one of the places that um, a lot of young people come. I go to Best Buy a lot, so I've been talking to the, the, the guys there. You know, I'm trying to do a little reconnaissance. To when, uh, you work at night. You work. Do you guys interest? What do you guys do? And we're gonna go. We're gonna go public with it. Right. It's gonna be radio, yeah. television. Um, there's gonna be a website set up and everything. You just don't want to pre-launch something before you even know what exactly you're launching. I don't want to get people's hopes up and then have to, <coughs> to pull it away. Um, but also. Uh, uh, Obviously, diversity is a big, important part of what I do, too. I've done movies, and I, I hire actors based on their abilities, and I like got diversity in there. So uh, uh, anyone you just from film and television? Yeah, yeah. Any, and uh, anyway, um, I hope that answers your question. It does. Thank you. Okay. Well, I was staying with that. I have one more little question for sure. you. Sure. Uh, 
You mentioned Cajun Palm Springs, of course, it's a family here. Do you have any idea about what percent of those people come from out of town on the cruise? Um, we actually don't know exactly, but one Just of an the, idea. our our what's Tim's luck? We heard through a source. Yeah, okay. We That's don't want to get into trouble. <laughs> yeah. That the whole crew comes from New York. Okay. Yeah. Which we were disappointed to hear. Yes. I was. Okay, so yeah. with with these type yeah. things, after they get this experience, they could go over yes. there. Yes. Right. And it, just to explain the understanding of that from the, the History Channel, <laughs> I mean, you all smart people, so you know. The understanding of that is History Channel's got a lot of money riding on this, so they're not going to sit here and do what we're saying that we're willing to do. They just want the thing done and delivered and back to them. They don't want to go, oh, we got to train this person for three months and this. So they're but it costs them money. Those airplane tickets, people setting them up, I mean, to bring people in, that, that's a lot of money. So if, if somebody could actually save that money with some really good people that are local, it's worth it. The one thing that we need to keep in mind is that this is to try to establish a toho at the very beginning. This is, this is where we start from and hope it'll expand sure. much, much uh, greater than that. Is there any other questions? Yes, um, want to kind of find out more details about uh, those individuals that you will train uh, from our community. How will you select those individuals? Um, I understand that you're going to have your skeleton crew that's going to come in uh, to actually do the training. Those folks will be paid. What is going to be your process of actually selecting those um, who will benefit from this apprenticeship? Well, I'm going to let the department's head, the department heads, make those you know sort of decisions based on skills and quali qualifications that they need. Because I'm not one who can sit there and tell them what they need in their departments. They're going to know. But let me just tell you, we need, ha we need hair and makeup. People people. We need people with electronic equipment uh, uh, experience, um, technology. Um, we've spoken to local photographers who are used to working around lights and lighting and set up lights so they can learn how to do lighting for film as opposed to just still photography. Those are just a few examples that I know off the top of my head, but there's others, obviously. Let me, let me answer that question also. Um, you know, we, I personally like my hands in everything. I like to, because I have like 10 eyes, so I like to supervise a lot of things because in case, so what she's saying is right, but say there's 20 departments. We had discussed Residents. no more than three. Yeah. Is that what we said? So if there is 20 departments, I don't know off the top of my head, that's, is that 60 people? Is my math right? Okay. So, so w I just don't want a short film to have like 200 credits at the end because that kind of looks a little ridiculous. For a film, it does. It's, a, it's okay, I should say. Um, so we said three people per department. If that department's filled, some of us have military experience. They do this sometimes with military. It's like it's filled. My dad has an old story about it when he was in World War II. They'll go, that's not available, but this is. Or what's next? They'll give you three or four other options. What I feel is extremely important is that we have people that are going to be able to work as a team because this is a team effort. I'm the head of the, I head the, 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 um, the set. I'm in charge, the director's in charge. But I don't go bossing people around. This is, my, this is my team, this is my basketball team, this is my whatever team that I have to accomplish my goal with. So uh, what we hope to have is people that um, wanna learn, wanna be there. I wanna have some fun too while we're doing it too because I kinda insist on doing that because it, it's a process and it's fun. But we're there to get a job done and all learn. Um, so hopefully we don't have prima donnas or people that are coming in that are just <laughs> with bad attitudes because they'll affect the whole set. So, um, but like I said, I'd like to have at least three in each department, um, which if there's, if there could be 20 departments. Yeah. You know, so that could be quite a few people. I think also to, to further ex uh, expand on what Campion is also saying is that um, as we're in pre-production mode right now, resumes are, you know, we'll, folks are able to submit their resumes uh, online via email uh, to, to the production company so that way, you know, folks can match them up with the different department heads uh, and, and make sure that they're a good fit. Um, so. What type of interest uh, have you all found since you have been doing your research? Uh, because, of course, the idea is, is we don't want to make this type of an investment, and there are five people in our community yeah. that want to play a part. I think one of the things that we have to consider <coughs> within the area is Alexandria has done such a great deal in building up uh, the arts community here. I think one of the things that we can all be very proud of is that we've got 
four or five great in art institutions here in town. Uh, part of the missing canon or factor is that we don't have, um, we haven't done a, a great job in retaining those who work in the creative industry, such as film and television. Although we do have folks who work in film and television on the local network, uh, Mitzi yourself, you came from uh, Channel 5, I believe, as well. We haven't done too much of a good job in attracting those, those types of uh, jobs here to the area. What this project simply does, it gives them a platform, or better yet, an opportunity to expand uh, beyond you know, opportunities that may have been presented elsewhere. For, for example, myself, a, a lot of folks don't know is that I'm an arts and entertainment consultant as well as a visual artist, and having lived in New Orleans for <laughs> 11 years, some of the opportunities that are presented to me to even this very moment as co-produced on a project this, even though it appears to be this small, it's very big, because we're starting from the ground up, hadn't been there before. Uh, all the years I've lived in New Orleans, even ha having taken several years of film studies courses, the furthest I ever got was being an extra because those opportunities were not on the ground available to locals. And so this is an excellent platform. Now let's talk dollars and cents. Um, you all are looking for an up to $50,000 investment from the city of Alexandria. Uh, in, in the research that you've done, what type of a, a return do you think that we would get off of that type of investment? I think um, the document that, that you all should have before you really states that there's a partial, a, a two, two kind of deal, Maybe fifty thousand dollars, but majority of it in kind. Uh, the most that the city would would, um, I believe, the document states that up to twenty five thousand. The rest will be solicited from the private sector. Um, from past projects before, even with Escapee, there was a great deal of in kind services. Even though we ultimately write out, you know, the actual dollar amount. As far as the return on the investment or ROI for the city, I mean, I think it's it's immeasurable. You really can't place a dollar dollar amount on it, but if, if, if I had to go on the cuff and say, I, I would ultimately say this, that by investing in local infrastructure within the creative sector, even within the arts and cultural arts district, you're allowed or we're, we're able to secure or, or receive a return from potential tax credits that are available. We think about levying taxes as it relates to the hotel motel tax. The same could be done within film industry as well. But then also you think about sustainability for those in the community as artists or, or, or crew members. If they live here and they work here, they're gonna play here. And eventually those dollars are gonna get sewn back into the communities in which they come from. And I think ultimately that's the, the larger part of the, the um, equation that we should be focused on. I actually, have, um, the answer to your question also about the locals, we've already, even though we're keeping this kind of under the radar right now, we probably have 11 or 12 locals that are excited. This isn't even including the group that works with Escape B. They don't even know about it yet, right? Mm -hmm. But they have committed and can't wait to do this. And I think we, besides the group in Baton Rouge, I think we have two other uh, uh, people that we might be bringing in and then the rest, so we've already started, so we already have like 10 to 12 already without saying anything. Um, the other thing is, I believe, now you can talk to the owners, but we pretty much put Finnegan's Wake and, and uh, Tampa and Grind on the map when we did Escape B. I mean, it really accelerated their business and, and, and a lot of the business downtown. That's a location I actually want to stay around again because I just want to bring attention to downtown shooting pieces of it just to show it's, I like it. I mean, I think it looks like anywhere, it could be anywhere. Um, if you can imagine all the people that would come and show up to watch this, they're gonna spend money if it's around the coffee house or different places. So um, uh, the people in Baton Rouge will come up and spend money. You know, uh, they like it up here. They were excited when we told them about it because they, they had a good time. Um, uh, so I think, uh, and then a, the most important thing is it's going to give job ex job experience. You know, to, to that's really what we're here for, is to give the job experience to the person who's never been on a set before. Like Chad would say, if they were lucky, they'd be an extra or they'd be getting somebody coffee in New Orleans, that they might be able to go and hold a camera if that's or know how to work a boom for a mic on sound or you know sit there and and watch me do my thing. Or, or Faith to do her thing, you know? So that's, that's, because usually they'll try to hide you and push you away. I've been on many sets, and, and movie sets and so forth, and they try to keep you away from the set. And we're gonna well, invite people. Did you people. make a, a statement about, like you said, like what, how do we know if like just five people are gonna show? Okay, I just have to say to you, I've been to 
three plays here, let's just say, just the plays. And every time I go out, my mom goes out, if they know that she's my mom, how do I get involved? So there is plenty of interest, at least from my standpoint, of people wanting to get involved. And I want people to be involved if they want to be involved. But with that comes responsibility. You know, it's not show up when you can, it's show up on time. I mean, you know, and you got to play. And that's really what it's about. I mean, the opportunity is going to be there. But the ones that are serious are the ones who are going to ultimately triumph. We talked a lot about individuals and, and capacity building here in the community with the project that you are going to be doing and hopefully those that you'll be doing in the future. What, uh, explain to the public and, and to us more about goods and services that you will use from the community and the type of investment that, um, you know, that actually, that you'll spend into the community by using <coughs> goods and services uh, from this area. Well, I just bought $5,000 worth of camera equipment from Best Buy. <laughs> <laughs> That's my, and I'm not going to dime out of this, so uh, I've already, you know, lost money. I'm running a deficit, so, uh, you know, uh, but, hey, it's an investment. It's an investment in the, you know, the group, the community. I mean, it's, it's, uh, hotels, food. Hotels. When you bring gas money, I mean, there's stuff. I mean, we live uh, out on the edge of Pineville, but, you know, Alexander, we I love coming down. I come downtown pretty much every day. Um, but everybody, but what I'm saying is, uh, maybe I'm going to the, can you ask the question? <laughs> yeah. Just wanted to know version. about, yeah, so that we can just uh, explain to us and also to the public the yeah. investment that this project will actually make into the community beyond the yeah. capacity building with the individuals of goods and services. I think to answer your question, like I think uh, one of the best Some examples is, is, is really when you look at, you got to feed crew. Right? Sometimes you're there early, sometimes you're there late, sometimes you're there all day. You know? And one of the great things about uh, working with, with Faith and Campion uh, from their previous project, uh, which was Escapee, they enlisted the support of local, um, not, I want to say restaurants, but caterers. So that's, that's one way how they're investing into the community, whereas that opportunity would have never been presented, or excuse me, had not been presented prior to such a production. As well as you think about uh, what Campion said earlier in terms of supporting local business and venues, whether it's Finnegan's Wake or Tamp and Grind. I think we're at Tamp and Grind all the time. Uh, but as well as, you know, you look at filling hotel rooms. When we look at hotel rooms just in general in this area, it's something just, I mean, it's so it's so important to this area because it's one of the things that CVB as well as Gata levies taxes from. You know, and it's something that we all largely benefit from, whether it's through the support of Gata or the support of this, the Convention and Business Bureau. So there's definitely a great deal of investment there on that end. Um, in hopes also, I think one of the other larger things is, is that folks who've come down on working with previous projects with Faith and Campion or even from anything that I've ever done in the city uh, through the museum in the past, folks have been excited to know that this area actually has life in it. So. Well, and my last question for you all um, as, as the organization, um, I see from the paperwork that we received, you all have also, I, from what I'm reading, uh, ask for, for funds from GATA, um, CVB, and also the city of Pineville. Do you have other commitments? Yeah, I, I think one of the things that um, it, it may not be spelled out clearly there because this is kind of a, a first, this is pretty much a pilot. You know, this is the first time something like this has ever even taken off the ground here in Alexandria. Uh, so in terms of potential sources of income, we're not going to turn a blind eye to them, you know, if, if, if that's to answer your question. But then also there are additional funds outside of that. I, I think Campin uh, made it evidently clear that he's invested some of his own personal finances into this project, uh, but as well as the three of us are donating our, tr our time tremendously, even well beyond uh, what you would consider the, the standard work week, beyond 40 hours a week, if not more, and sometimes overnight or on the weekend. For example, for your makeup department, okay, if you're just talking about goods, you have to buy makeup every time you do a production. You have to buy makeup. So that's going to be bought locally in department stores. You have to buy, um, the, you can't just use something that's already been used in someone's kit. They have to have a fresh kit to work on people. So that will be supplied by the company. Um, clothing that you're, at, you know, atmosphere people will bring in their own clothing. Some of your principals, we might provide clothing and that would be obviously from local stores. We did it for Escapee, we'll do that for, for here. 
um, art from a local artist. Everything will be local. Everything will be local. We will not be bringing in goods from any other place. It will all be right here in central Louisiana. So the option, the, the, uh, it's, it's endless. Well, I have okay. one more thing to say also, I think on that too. When we were doing the movie too, we had a lot of people coming in from Jonesville and Gina and outlining areas too that would come and to hear about it and they wanted to come and watch and they're gonna spend money too. Um, one of the goals too is from a market, marketing uh, standpoint for the city, uh, what we do with Escapee is we, it, it, at the end of the movie, it said shot in the city of Alexandria, thank you for the, 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 the all over the world. That's being played all over the world. We would do the same with this. I think it's it's a type of project that could, uh, we wanna send it to festivals. It's not, you don't, like I said, you don't sell a, a short, but we would want, and then the people that worked on it can have credits on something that's gonna be sent around, <coughs> and that gets them excited. I think we've talked too long probably, yeah. but <laughs> anyway. Okay, well, I'll, um, to make sure that I've got clarification on the last question that I ask, at this point, though, you do not have any other commitments Fine. from these other organizations? You mean funding? Oh, as funding. far as actual, as far no, as funding. There, there has not been an actual uh, commitment of funding from either of the sources in which you listed. And I okay. want to say, explain why this kind of came on really quickly, because um, I knew that uh, the, the time to get a working crew from Baton Rouge is going to be over the holidays because they're going to be back on another film. They just finished two, and they're going to be back on another film. And maybe they might meet some people up here too because it's we go back and forth. We have a lot of people in Baton Rouge we know. Um, uh, and also there was two actors that are actually we're going to be in a piece that are going to be the only two imports that have done a lot of movies, young kids. We're very excited. They're both in college, and they're both taking their finals early to be here. So I've already preempted that, you know, to get that going, and the rest will be all locals. Um, and, and, and I'm actually glad that you are mentioning that because that is a, that's <coughs> definitely been a big question of this council. It was was the timing part of all of this. Yeah, I purposely did this. I know, and it was probably to unfair. Us very quickly, so <coughs> right, we're trying, right, kind of wondering why there was such a time. Yeah, it has to do with scheduling. Our 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 business, if a production hasn't started, it's it, they're done for for November, December into January. So this is a perfect time that they're free, not already employed and I that. to get them. Yeah, and then they'll be back working on something. And then I, like I, when I called our guy in Baton Rouge, he s I said, who's available? And then he's called me back. Everybody's available. So. Uh, we've run past our time quite a bit. I think that we've asked and had answered most all the questions. Or, uh, do I, I, move, I, move, I move to begin to full council. I second. Have a motion to second without objection. We recommend a full council. Okay. That uh, completes the business of the committee. Well, let's, we have a small group. We have a, an agenda to follow. With that in mind, we'll start our meeting right now. Could you please rise while I make the pronounce the invocation? <coughs> Pledge of allegiance by uh, Mr. <coughs> Joe. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that at this time of the year we feel a need to help each other, both on a local and a federal level. Give us the ability to be compassionate and work together so that everyone and all mankind can improve and enjoy life. All this we ask this in thy name. Amen. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Ms. Gibson, present. Mr. Ballard. Here. Mr. Johnson. Present. Mr. Lorberdang. Here. Mr. Jones. Present. Mr. Fowler. Here. Mr. Silver. Here. Mr. Fuzzy, Mr. Form. Okay. Madam Clerk, consent calendar, any comments or? <coughs> finance and legal. Which one? A. Finance and legal. Anything else? I move. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All the same sign, so ordered. Continue, please. Ordinances for final adoption subject to a public hearing number seven is to consider final adoption of an ordinance authorizing the mayor to accept the low bid submitted for cast ductile iron and related accessories for a 12-month period. So moved. Moved. Second. moved by Ms. Gibson, second by Mr. Fowler. Any discussion? 
Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, so ordered. <coughs> Number eight, to consider final adoption of an ordinance authorizing the mayor to accept the low bid submitted for operating supplies for the wastewater department. Move. Sorry. Moved by Mr. Jones, second by Mr. Fowler. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, <coughs> so ordered. Number nine, to consider final adoption of an ordinance <coughs> Amending 2012-2013 operating budget for positions in the police department. So moved. Second. Moved by Ms. Gibson, second by Mr. Fowler. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign? No. <coughs> one no. Yeah, one no. Okay. All right. Number 10, to consider final adoption of an ordinance authorizing the acquisition of parcel number 728 required for the Sugar House Road drainage and improvement project. Moved. Second. Second. Moved by Mr. Fowler, second by Mr. Jones. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. So ordered. Number 11, to consider final adoption of an ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a cooperative endeavor agreement with the Alexandria Mardi Gras Association for support of the 2013 and 2014 Mardi Gras activities. Moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Johnson, second by Mr. Jones. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. So ordered. Number 12, to consider final adoption of an ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into contracts in any necessary and necessary agreements with the Lexus Crew Productions to promote film production within central Louisiana, assist local equity partners, and to train local crews to provide funding of up to 50000 for in-kind and monetary value and to provide for assistance and workmanship from the Department of Utilities, Public Works, Police, and Fire and other matters with respect thereto, including seeking partnering with other development stakeholders and partners. So move, move for discussion. Moved by Mr. Fowler, second by Ms. Gibson. Right. Discussion, any comment? I do, I've got All a right. question for the administration. Um, not exactly the same proposal, um, but we saw something very similar in an investment that the city made before I got on the council um, that I know we've had uh, lots of issue with. I think the movie shows something, Bonnie and Clyde. W where does that stand before we, you know, agree to or not make another investment into a similar type of project? Uh, Ms. Gibson, we have uh, been in communication uh, with uh, the production company, and they have agreed to remit to us our investment that we've made in, to them. So we will re they will return our money. And that investment was how much? 50000 Will they be remitting back to us 50000 I'm not sure. Uh, plus there's interest an, or, or there's what? There's an agreement with the city attorney, and the city, the city attorney has worked it out. So you all don't you don't have I don't I have I don't have act, the actual knowledge of the agreement that the city attorney has worked out. I do know uh, that it uh, has been worked out and the remission will be back to the city. The agreement is that they will, will return our investment. Do you know what the time frame for that no, is? No ma'am, I do not. Mr. Giss, do you have any idea? No ma'am. Anybody? Any Mr. Provosti. I can't give you a time frame, uh, Ms. Gibson, as to when this money is going to be delivered to the city, but I do know from conversations with the city attorney that the agreement has been made. Uh, I don't. I don't know about interest. The only thing I've heard is fifty thousand dollars, and uh, and on top of that, uh, it was in both the town talk and, a, and an online paper called Quad Four something that in uh, in which uh, uh, the principal in in the. Uh, production said that she was going to, has already made an agreement with the city attorney to return the money to the city. And that's as much as I know. Mr. Uh, Robert Dane? 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Provost, when you talk to the city attorney, ask him to either send us an email or letter saying whether or not it's been. I'll certainly do. And I was going to volunteer to follow up with that, and because, we'll do so. Because understand, if we're going to allocate money, and uh, the money's been allocated three or four years ago, and then there's no movie, then folks are thinking we just have tons of money to give away, and we don't have that, so we need to get that money back soon. I, I understand that, and besides that, it would be a violation, as you well know, Ms. Lavardane, of, of Article 7, Section 14. Yeah, the discretion. And well, yeah. I, I would just ha have to make I, I, would, I would just have to make this comment um, that as far as it being in the paper today or on some other online paper, as the legislative body of the city, that is not where we should get our information on how city funds are being used. We should get our our information from whether it be legal, the finance director, from the mayor. You know, I fully not from the newspaper. I understand that, and I will deliver that message, okay. Ms. Gibson. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? If not, all those in favor, if not all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. No. All right. So order.